I did some cocaine for a week. I had to get high. I had to back then. I had to get high. Um, I couldn't handle it at all. You have to go. Enough. You understand, right? Thank you. Thank you, man. It was at this moment that he take this stuff off? He f up. When it comes to wild adventures, Mike Tyson's life is never short of excitement. During an interview when asked about his time in jail, Mike cryptically admitted to some private encounters. What happened behind bars? Well, let's just say things got intimate between Mike and some jail staff. Let's just keep it real. Tyson, was you having sex in jail? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, I was. You was? Yeah, yeah. Conjugal uh, visits? No, um, teacher. No, um, I had to go to school to get my GED. Oh, the teacher. Let's make some noise for education. Hey! In a jaw-dropping revelation on Jimmy Kimmel's show, Mike Tyson shared a shocking encounter involving a serial killer. Tyson's run-in with this individual took an unexpected turn that left everyone stunned. I go do an interview. This is a sports writer, so I have my, my people call me up and say, you got a reporter. I'm talking to the guy. The guy's a really small guy, but a really nice guy. I'm talking to him. Three days go by. I'm in the gym, and the gym is surrounded with cops. And I said, what the hell did I do? Who asked did I grab last night? <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what happened. So I came outside and I was talking to the guy, and he showed me the picture of me and the guy because it was on his website. And he said, um, do you know this gentleman? I was promoting a fight. If I must have said something to him, if I offended him, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And he said, no, he liked you, Mr. Tyson. He didn't like the 28 people that he shot and the eight that he killed. You got interviewed by a murderer? Yes. Ever wonder how Mike Tyson became the baddest man on the planet? Well, it wasn't just his punch. Picture this, 4 a.m. wake-up calls, running like he's being chased by a lion, and then doing more sit-ups, push-ups, dips, and shrugs than you've ever done in your life. No wonder he struck fear in his opponent's hearts. In 1980, after Muhammad Ali's loss to Larry Holmes, heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. 14-year-old Mike Tyson vowed to avenge it. Seven years later, Tyson fulfilled his promise, knocking out Holmes in four rounds. Adding to the drama, Ali was ringside, whispering something to Tyson beforehand. For Tyson, it was more than just a win. It was a moment of triumph. Did you know that Mike Tyson's journey into fighting began with a mysterious incident involving his pet pigeons? As a child, Tyson witnessed something that sparked his lifelong fascination with these birds, leading him down a path that would eventually make him a boxing legend. This one guy stole one of the birds, got my mother to get my birds. Mom, help me. One guy put a bird on and ran out. So I ran after him, please give me my bird. Please, please, can I have my bird? And he bird ripped the bird head off, hit me with the bird, threw the blood on me, smacked me around to so my friends and Mike, fight him. Don't be afraid. It's not like I was sensational. I was just flaring away, and I guess I hit him more than he hit me, so I, I, I won. I Did you ever imagine how many times Mike Tyson was arrested before turning 13? The answer may shock you. In an interview with GQ, Tyson revealed all. At the age of 13, he's been arrested 38 times. He played at the Tryon School for Boys in Johnstown. Tyson emerged in boxing the building that he discovered there by Bobby Stewart. Yeah, that's true, and uh, Bobby Stewart was the first person to have um, discovered any kind of talent that showed me that I had ability to do anything. I thought I was a young kid, a purpose in this world. I didn't really care about being in this world. It gave me the confidence to do things I never believed that I could do before. It gave me an ego. And During a visit to New York's zoo with his ex-wife, Robin Givens, Tyson found himself in a peculiar situation. In a bold move, he attempted to strike a deal with a zoo attendant, offering a hefty sum of $10,000 to fight a gorilla. Damn! Who do you think would have won that fight? 
It's day one. The fun just begun. During his prison stint, Mike Tyson had many unexpected celebrity visitors, including a famous rapper. Tyson initially couldn't recall their encounter, but a letter sparked memories, leaving Tyson deeply touched by their connection. When I was in prison, his mother had wrote me a letter and stuff and asked me, you know, she said, my son said you let him in a club one time and, and he wants to see you and my son is Tupac. I said, sure. And I knew who Tupac was, but I don't remember letting him in any club. Then he came and he discussed and made me remember it. Mm -hmm. And then we've been friends ever since. He came to visit me in prison twice. He was really a, a special person. I'm just very grateful that I met him in this journey. In another surprising turn, Florence Henderson, known for her nurturing presence, visited Mike Tyson during his time in prison. Despite her genuine compassion, Tyson hesitated to meet her. What led to Tyson's reluctance to meet someone like Henderson? He was too embarrassed and too shy to see me. In a shocking turn of events on June 28, 1977, Mike Tyson bit Evander Holyfield's ear not once, but twice during their championship boxing bout. Tyson's actions led to his disqualification, with Holyfield declared the winner. Despite the famous incident, during their rematch, Tyson bit Holyfield's other ear in the following round, prompting the fight to be stopped. It's, it's just here. He gets into the position there. Watch. You see, he stares there. There, he bites him there. You see him lift his teeth. And Holyfield in agony at that point, trying to rip free. During an interview with Fox News, Evander Holyfield revealed insights into Mike Tyson's ear-biting incident. Evander, I'm sorry. I'm like just focused on the ear. But I'm looking, but your ear looks fine. Your ear? We're talking about when Tyson bit it, right? It's this ear, right? Yeah. Let me see it. Is yeah. it, it? Oh, did it grow back a little bit? No. Oh. It's, it's the same. Displaying the missing piece of his ear, Holyfield hinted at Tyson's emotions during the encounter. What did Holyfield disclose about Tyson's mindset during the fight? What was he thinking? What was that all about? Why did he do that? You know, anger, you know, disappointment. What did you want to do when he did that to you? Bite him back, but I chose not to. I'm sorry, Evanda. It's your ear. In a surprising turn of events, boxing icons Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield announced a joint business venture. The unexpected partnership between these former rivals has left fans buzzing with speculation. One thing you can be sure of is that nothing is more rewarding than the gift of giving. You go first. You go first. No, you go first. All right. You go first. Okay. No, I go. You sure? Um, Here you go. What's this? I'm glad we iron things out. Now I got you a gift. What is this? What is this? I got you your ear. No, it's not. This ain't my ear. Yes, it is. Cherry pie punch, Billy. My ears don't taste like cherry pie. Yes, they do. Why, I ate your ear, I should know. Well, you're right. Tyson swings by his ex's place for a casual catch-up, but guess who's there? None other than a Hollywood A-lister, adding a twist to the reunion. Now, did this unexpected guest need a Tyson-sized bodyguard after that visit? Very famously in the 1980s, you were uh, married to Robin Givens. Yeah. That after your divorce, you guys were still somewhat involved. Um, yeah, during our crazy marriage. So, so even after you were divorced, you would sometimes yes. go over to her house? <laughs> yes. That's okay. I go to the house, I ring the buzzer, no one's there. And as I go to my car, she drives up. Oh, right, it's gonna happen, it's going down. She drives up with the handsome Brad Pitt. I said, oh man, I ain't gonna get no pussy. <laughs> Brad Pitt sees you, he's gotta be scared. Cause she's yeah. pulling up with your ex-wife. I was just, um, emotionally comatose. I went from a hot stallion to a wet noodle and it just totally overwhelmed me, you know? 
In a twist worthy of a Hollywood plot, Las Vegas authorities seized Mike Tyson's seven tigers following a startling incident at his residence. Tyson's ownership of these majestic creatures captured headlines, but the city's intervention added a layer of mystery to the story. What led to the confiscation of Tyson's exotic pets? How many tigers you had in your house? I had three of them in my house. Tell me what somebody happened, Mike. Jumped, Somebody jumped over my fence where the tiger was. The tiger didn't know the lady, so it was a bad accident. So she jumped over the gate? Yeah, she jumped in the, the property where the tiger was at. They sued you for that shit? Well, they tried to until they found out that she jumped over the fence. And listen, when I saw what the tiger did to her hand, I had a lot of money back then, so I gave her 250000 whatever it was, because she was just fucked up, Joe. Before The Hangover 2 hit theaters, a legal dispute erupted involving the film's production company. The lawsuit, initiated by a tattoo artist, injected an element of surprise into the movie's release, sparking curiosity among viewers. Despite facing drug tests and even a DUI arrest, Mike Tyson's ability to bypass legal challenges with unconventional methods adds an intriguing layer to his persona. Um, I, I, was, I was arrested for a DWI. I, was really, I wasn't on alcohol, I was on cocaine. I didn't stop smoking. I couldn't stop, I was addicted to weed, I couldn't stop smoking. So I had to get a wizard, wizardator, a fake dick with somebody else's pissing. And I used to always do this, act like I was gonna pull out from him. Hey, you know, turn around, you gotta say, turn around. I'll say, hey, get away, turn around. I let the stuff out and get away with it. I hope the guy don't say, Mr. Tyson, you're pregnant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Three years after signing with Don King, Mike Tyson stumbled upon a surprising discovery a fan club he didn't even know existed. Visiting for the first time, he found a letter from a woman asking him to call her dying child. Tyson obliged, but it was a year too late. Overwhelmed, he hung up, cursed King, and tears welled up in his eyes, realizing the missed chance. On November 5, 1996, Mike Tyson made headlines when he openly criticized Don King during an interview expressing frustration over undisclosed issues. In another incident, Mike Tyson found himself in a heated confrontation with Don King. As Tyson was about to sign a significant check, memories of past grievances flooded his mind, sparking a tense confrontation. Don was talking to me and he was talking about, man, I gotta get these white motherfuckers out of our business, man. That's all these white motherfuckers do. Just come over here, man, you gonna sign this check. And so he had me on that. As soon as I get on the phone, I, I'm going back. I'm gonna make another deal with Don. I'm gonna have millions again and everything's gonna be all right. But on the plane, I start doing some cocaine. I'm getting ready to go see 40 million bucks and I'm broke. I don't have a penny. I'm on this jet, this beautiful jet. I say to myself, Don is dissing me. He said, this is my motherfucking plane. He's sending my plane with the money he stole from me to pick me up. That's some bitch shit. Why did my mind, why did I go there? Why can't I go somewhere else? Why did I have to go there? Why did it have to be about me? And he's making a fool out of me by sending my plane to pick me up and I can't keep my plane. And um, we land in Miami, Don comes. I'm in the back of the road with and I just kicked the boom and it stopped. It was just bad, right? It, was, it just was bad, it was bad. So we chase him around the car. He, and then he gets in the car, he takes off. He takes over Jackie and my people in the car and I'm on the highway the car to come and I'm on the fucking highway. <laughs> Mike Tyson's extravagant lifestyle knows no bounds, evidenced by his lavish purchases of a solid gold bathtub and two white Bengal tigers. With a bathtub alone costing a fortune in 24 karat gold, Tyson's spending spree didn't stop there. His acquisition of the majestic tigers, along with the exorbitant monthly upkeep costs, showcases the extent of Tyson's indulgence. As Tyson himself admits, his spending habits often bordered on the absurd. One minute they look at you and they may take a chunk at you, then 20 minutes later they may come and lick you. So you gotta be, be very, very cautious with them. The streets of Harlem witnessed a dramatic showdown in 1988, as former adversaries Mike Tyson and Mitch Green clashed in an unexpected altercation. Tensions flared outside a clothing store, sparking a heated argument that quickly turned physical. Tyson was arrested after breaking his hand in a street brawl with Mitch Green. 
a boxer he'd beaten two years earlier in the ring. With Tyson's reputation for ferocity preceding him, the brawl left onlookers stunned, marking a tumultuous chapter in both fighters' legacies. Tyson has suffered a hairline fracture to his right wrist after a street brawl with former contender Mitch Green. Green sustained five stitches to his nose but claimed a moral victory. He hit me and I didn't see his punch coming and he did not knock me down or nothing. I saw him do like this and run. He ran! He's a young, dumb knucklehead that got to ask his wife for permission to do whatever he do. The Mitch comes, right? The Mitch, the Mitch comes. The rivalry between Mike Tyson and Michael Jordan had an unexpected origin, a woman. In December 1988, at a star-studded Chicago party, tensions flared when Tyson accused Jordan of having a relationship with his ex-wife, Robin Givens. With Tyson's undefeated boxing record and Jordan's rising NBA stardom, the confrontation added a new dimension to their public images. As recounted by Tyson's former manager, Rory Holloway, the encounter left Jordan visibly shaken, highlighting the intensity of their feud. In an unexpected turn, Mike Tyson ventured into the world of animation with Mike Tyson Mysteries, a hilarious adult animated series that aired from 2014 to 2020. The show follows Tyson, accompanied by his adopted Korean daughter, a friendly ghost, and a talking pigeon as they embark on solving mysteries. Drawing inspiration from classic mystery-solving cartoons like Scooby-Doo, the series adds a surreal and irreverent twist to the genre. Tyson's own voice talents contribute to the show's unique charm and appeal. Now let's get you boys back to school. <sighs> Were you scared? When the tree came to life? When Mike almost beat the shit out of you. You know, he could f***ing kill you. He could kill all of us. I think sometimes we forget that that's Mike Tyson. Hey! Let's pick up the mother pace back there. Okay, moving on. Sorry, Michael. Moving on. <laughs> Picture this, a motorcyclist in distress, his world turned upside down after a crash. And then, out of nowhere, Mike Tyson appears like a guardian angel. The bewildered rider, barely believing his eyes, questions the reality of the moment. Was Tyson really there or was it all just a dream? The bike literally flipped over it. A little bit disoriented, looking up, looking around, like, what's going on? Am I about to see a bumper come over my head? What's what's about to happen? Instead of a bumper, Chesley would see a former boxer, Mike Tyson, once heavyweight champion of the world. For a second there, I thought I was hallucinating. And he's going, just stay down, dude, just stay down. You got Iron Mike Tyson sitting over you going, nobody touch him. That's like a second grader's dream right there. He's my hero. In all honesty, I, 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 words can't express how much appreciation I have for him. I'm at the mercy of the world, and I got Mike Tyson sitting there making sure that the world didn't come and kick me while I'm down. During a JetBlue flight from San Francisco to Florida, Mike Tyson got into a tense situation with another passenger. Despite the chaos, Tyson emerged without facing charges. What exactly did Tyson do in response to the harassment? This is George talking to Mike Tyson, bro. This shit crazy, bro. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson trying to give us some shrooms. <laughs> you don't know how to act. Tyson looking out, man. This shit crazy. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Mike, Mike, come on. Let's go stop back. Yeah, blue mint flight. We just got beat up by Mike Tyson. Yeah, he got f***ed up. In a revealing interview, Mike Tyson confessed that Tupac Shakur was the only person he considered truly fearless, to the point that Tyson felt uncomfortable in his presence. What was it about Tupac that made Tyson, a man known for his own fearlessness, uneasy? What really touched me about him, that he was just very, he was only like 125 pounds, he wasn't a big guy, but he was just fearless, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's um, that's an uncomfortable feeling to be around someone. When someone is just absolutely fearless and not conscious of any repercussion, like, I've never met nobody like that before. Don King, infamous for his history of scamming and defrauding boxers like Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, and Julio Cesar Chavez, maintained a controversial relationship with Mike Tyson. Tyson was taken aback to learn that King was charging him a staggering $8,000 a week for towels. Can you imagine Tyson's reaction to such exploitation? 
Mike Tyson's love for pigeons knew no bounds. At one point, he had a whopping 350 of them under his care in his own home. However, with the arrival of his children, Tyson made the tough call to downsize, reducing the flock to a still impressive 100. You can't imagine how many ferocious beaten I took over these pigeons. When my life was at stake and guys, people throwing you off the roof, kicking your man, man, over these birds. What we love about these birds is what we can't get from human beings, and that's loyalty. As long as he's alive and his heart's pumping, he'll come back. Mike Tyson shook things up when he sold his mansion to rapper 50 Cent. With a hefty price tag just to maintain the lawn, it was a deal that caught everyone's attention. Now, in a twist of fate, 50 Cent reveals the inside story of the mansion's lavish furniture and decor. Stay tuned to discover the opulence that awaited 50 Cent within Tyson's former abode. You had like a castle in Canada. Yeah, yeah. You yet? Tell yeah, me. I bought my Tyson's home out there. Was... Did Mike leave anything behind? A lot of stuff. Like, anything you can like talk what? about? Like what? Yeah, like actually, this thing almost looks like it right here on the wall right there. That, that fixture. Yeah. He had this really ugly light fixtures and I. <laughs> But they were like 10 karat gold. Real, they were real. I had an uh, interior decorator yeah. help me with the house because who knows how to dress up a 55,000 square foot house. So she was like, but, but these things are hideous. Can we take them down? I was like, yes. And they told me it was 10 karat gold. I said, put them back. <laughs> Who knew Mike Tyson had a hidden talent for music? Watch as he surprises everyone with his unexpected skills in the upcoming video. You won't want to miss this. Tall and tan and young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema goes walking in. When she swings so gentle that when she passes, each one she passes say, yes, I would give my heart back. Even after making a fortune of $300 million from boxing, Mike Tyson went bankrupt in 2003. Stick around for Tyson's take on this financial roller coaster in the next video. Where did most of the money go? H houses or drugs, yeah, girls? Planes, boats. It's stupid shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. Do you regret anything? Yeah, and I didn't pay taxes really at that time. <laughs> That'll get you, yeah. <laughs> but they always come back. <laughs> During an intriguing conversation with Joe Rogan, Mike Tyson revealed a curious incident from his past. At just 12 years old, his mentor Cus D'Amato hypnotized him, leaving behind cryptic suggestions that would shape his future. Ever wondered what profound words Cuz uttered during that hypnotic session? Stay tuned for Tyson's captivating reflections on this enigmatic moment. He used to take me to a hypnotist. He was a hypnotist as well. Yeah, and I used to go in the, the hypnotist motions. What kind of shit do they make you do? You know, and how they do it? If you relax, you go under, you totally f focus on blackness, nothingness. Be a ferocious animal, you're gonna both hands to the body, you'll use your jab, you're gonna do this in ferocious fashion. And they seek all that in me as I was young. So they're putting you under and just teaching you that mindset. Yeah. Mike Tyson's face tattoo almost took a different turn before its iconic design. Initially contemplating a more extravagant option, Tyson was swayed by his tattoo artist to reconsider. What prompted Tyson to alter his original plan for his face tattoo? I just thought it was a cool tattoo. I was going to get a bunch of hearts and stuff and be like a, a small, that would have been really stupid. I would have been the man of hearts, baby. <laughs> how, how close were you to getting that? The tattoo, I said, no, I'm not doing it. He said, I ain't doing that. Oh, so that's what you wanted and he said he wouldn't do it. He said, I ain't doing that, no. That's not a tattoo for me, I can't do that. 